Hello, my Swifty friends. Before we can install the software libraries from Google that we want to use, we first have to install the CocoaPods library and dependency management software. Now, it's free, and you only need to do this once on your Mac, but after we get CocoaPods up and running with our Google software in the next few videos, you get all of these cool place lookup features. You, too, are going to be cuckoo for CocoaPods. So let's go. Now the next three videos will be fairly short, but first let's look at what you'll have after these three videos. So you see that we have our standard table view controller. We're going to switch to the standard subtitle table view cell style for now, just temporarily so that we can show the latitude and longitude. And we'll use the Google Place Autocomplete library, which will give us the features that you see here. We'll be able to copy and paste code directly from Google, and with just a few small changes, we'll be able to get this pop-up search controller that you see. Uh, it'll give us access to any place, city, region, street, retail location, etc. that Google has information on it in its place database and Google can give us the data that you see here as well as lots of other stuff including the latitude and longitude now the reason that we want these coordinates is that our weather app isn't going to show the latitude and longitude we just show the coordinates here to show that we've got the information correctly but in later videos as we work further on our weather gift app we use the latitude and longitude to pass to our weather API which will give us the weather for that specific latitude and longitude now over the next three videos, we're gonna learn how to install the CocoaPods Dependency Manager on your Mac. Now you'll need to do this only once if you've never installed it on your Mac. And this is a tool that will let us easily install software libraries written by others. And by using these libraries, this will let us get more done quickly using code that's been written, debugged, and is used in production by other professional developers. Next, we're gonna learn how to install one of these CocoaPod libraries that's been written by others. Now you need to do this step for any project that you wanna use a new additional software library in. So we're gonna be using a software library for Google Places, and if you created a new project and wanted to use Google Places in that, you'd need to follow these steps as well. And finally, you'll learn how to set up a Google Cloud account. You'll only need to do that once. How to create a new project, which you'll do for every new project. How to get an API key that can identify your project for billing and to get statistics on how your project is being used. How to add the API key relatively securely to your app. We'll learn how to use Git Ignore so that we don't upload your API key to the public GitHub space. And we'll learn to get the Google Places library to work just like we've shown. Now, even though you're going to be creating a Google Cloud account, you get $300 in credit right away. You do need a credit card to register it, but I've used my Google Cloud pretty frequently, and I've never used up that initial $300 credit, so you shouldn't expect that. And if you end up using up all of your credits, that probably means your app is a wild success, so congratulations. Anyway, let's get at it. So we're going to install the CocoaPods Dependency Manager. So why don't you open a browser and go to CocoaPods.org. We're going to find a command here that we'll copy and we'll use for our installation. Now before we do that, also know that you can also search to find what software libraries are available to install using the CocoaPods Dependency Manager. There are quite a few. The command we're going to copy is this one just below that says sudo gem install CocoaPods, but I'm first going to click on this link that says the guides. There are a bunch of guides online, including the installation guide. If you scroll up, you can find more documentation, you can find an installation video here, but you can see the description up here. It says CocoaPods manages library dependencies for your Xcode projects. So that allows you to install third-party libraries. Down below, it says that this improves the discoverability and engagement of third-party open source software libraries, which is great. Software that's been written by others, debugged by others, that allows us to do more with less code, I'm in. So if you've never installed CocoaPods on your Mac, we're going to need this line down here. Highlight the line that says sudo gem install CocoaPods, copy that with a command C, and then let's open the terminal application. Now the terminal app is all text-based, it's not a lot of fun to use, but we've got the command we need right here. Now to find terminal, I'm just going to use spotlight, so I'll type command space, I get spotlight search up here, I'm going to type in the word terminal, press enter, and that'll launch the terminal program. Then in the terminal window, I'll do a command V to paste in the instruction that I just copied, then press return. You'll be asked for the password on your Mac, then press return. The installation might take a bit of time. You should also expect that the stuff that you see scrolling by will pause sometimes for maybe half a minute or a minute during the install. I've sped up my video here, so my install will look faster than yours. You'll soon be brought back to a command prompt, and that means you've installed CocoaPods. Now, if you do get any errors, you should get instructions on screen on how to resolve those errors. And if for some reason you're using a Mac that you don't have access to, you can't use this sudo, which is the super user do command. That might be the case if you're using somebody else's Mac and you don't know the administrator password. Go back to the CocoaPods page. You can see down below there's something that says sudo less installation, but that shouldn't apply to most people that are working on their own Macs. Now, if you got this far, you return to this percent sign prompt. You've got CocoaPods installed. You only need to do that once on a Mac where it wasn't installed previously. Congratulations. Let's move on in the next video.